Thank you, Holy Spirit, for life. Thank you for healing, for prosperity, for advancement, for thy will. We give you all glory and understanding. Rakoto Sheketeba. I want you to share this on your wall as you connect by the authority and the power in the name of Jesus. We are just going to go and pray. Today is a great day for us to search the word and pray also because God is not lacking anything. He's moving and he's moving fast and clear. We all, we, our ability to understand the move of God at the time that is, we are in is very, very critical to what God is doing now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Rokoto Shakataba. Zakoto Robo Sikataba. Makataraba Shikotobo. So if you are if you are on, 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 online, please can you just share this on your wall? Invite someone, your family members. Rakata Sokotobo. Libraga Shikataba. Lubogo Sakataba Sikataba. Namaga Shokotobo. In the name of Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, we worship you. We adore you. We thank you for all that you are doing and what you will continue to do. Let your name be glorified, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Makoto rubo sekotobo, nekata shikataba. Thank you, Father. Blessed be thy holy name, O oh Lord, for who you are who you represent and who you will always be. Let your name be glorified. Let your name be adored. You are God. There is none like you. The Bible says you are God all by yourself. Generation will come and go. You will never change. You are the unchangeable changer. We bless you for the opportunity to be in your presence even tonight and this evening or this morning, whatever time zone you are in. Lord, we bless you for allowing us to share of your glory. The Bible says it's not of him that will it nor run it, but it's of God that showeth mercy. Let your mercy be found in us today in the name of Jesus Christ. Have your way, O oh Lord. Have your way that your name will be glorified. Omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscience, God. I am that I am ancient of days. We give you all glory and adoration. We worship you. We thank you for life, for healing, for prosperity, for advancement, for thy word, for thy will. O Lord, Father, for all that you have done and continue to do in us. We thank you for you have preserved us, not by our doings, not because we are worthy, but because of thy grace, because of thy covenant. You are a covenant keeping God. We thank you, Lord. There is none like you. Rokata shakataba, lima gasukotobo, rakoto seketeba, lekata shikotobo, lima gasakataba. Blessed be thy holy name, O Lord. Rabogo sekedeba, likanama shakataba. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, let your name be glorified. Let your name be adored. Holy Spirit, have your way, O Lord, that your name will continue to be glorified forever. Excellent and majesty be unto thy name. We adore you, Lord. We worship you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Mm -hmm. The Bible said the entrance of the world bringeth light and understanding to the simple. Lord, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Let the word that we are speaking and understanding now not be an enticing word of a man, but let it be the word of God that we bring glory to thy holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. The word for us today is understanding the time. Many times as Christians, we are in a move of God and many of us, we are just flowing by the move, but we don't understand the times and season that God does his things. Today we are gonna to pray intensively because it is by prayer that such move of God will be understood. The Bible says in First Chronicle chapter, chapter 12, First Chronicle chapter 12, you look at verse 32, the Bible said from the source of Issachar, hallelujah, 
They are men that understood time. The sons of Issachar. The Issachar is a tribe in Israel, but they are men that has timing in their quivers. They understand when Israel went or to go to war and when to retreat, when to pray, when to fast. They understood when to do all the things that the children of God have to do. It is only by the grace of God that you will be able to know the move of God that deep. Understanding the time is very, very vital to our serving God, to our growing with God, to our appreciating God. Because sometimes, I remember when Jesus was, was about to be born, the Jews were still praying, waiting for Messiah. Some of them are still waiting for a Messiah. Messiah had come and gone. They didn't know. It was not revealed to them because they were not discerning in the spirit. We are used to shooting stars. And that is what we know, but there's what we call a day spring star. The one that is a moving star. Once the moving star comes out, you have to know that God is changing seasons. In the Christendom today, there's a lot of movement of God, especially in this COVID time. Many people see COVID as just a sickness that comes and it's like a plague killing people. Even in the time of the plague of Egypt, the plague is an announcement of a new dimension of God. The, 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 the Egyptians were focused on the plague and they were dealing with it from one plague to the next plague. But the Jews that were close to Moses knew that it was time for them to leave that land. So your ability to know that God has moved to somewhere or following God is very vital in this time. So the sons of Issachar, the Bible said they were men that understood timing and their brethren were, were at their command. So when you know timing in ministry, when you know timing as a son of God, when you know timing as a child of God, it will be very vital for you to understand when to retreat and when to fight, to help you to understand when to pray and when to celebrate. There is time for everything. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want us to go to the, to, to the book of Ecclesiastes. We, uh, we start there, but chapter 11, we are reading verse 1 to 5. Ecclesiastes 11, I just want us to put um, context to what we are saying. Understand the time. These are for sons of God. He said, cast your bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 from verse 1. Cast your bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Give a portion to seven and also eight, for thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. If the cloud be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if the tree fall towards the south or towards the north, in the place where the tree falleth, there it shall be. The ability to know where it's going to fall is very vital. Then look at verse four. We are going to focus on four and five. He said, he that observed the wind shall not sow. And he that regarded the cloud shall not reap. If I say, oh, I'm, not, I'm going to wait for the cloud to be dark, then you have missed out because if the cloud is already dark, then that means rain is falling. You can't sow in the mix of the rain. So you could have sown your seed when the cloud was dry, hoping and knowing that the cloud will be dark one day. So he that observed the wind shall not sow. And he that, people that do local farming that does not use technology to do farming, like that right now, a lot of farming is not really um, natural, it's mechanical because some of the crops that we eat are planted in warehouses and they use a lot of technologies to give it sunlight, to give it rain, to give it all these things are being manipulated. But they, I'm talking about the, the, the organic farming, the local farming, the, the natural way of farming. You have to just go and sow your seed. You know the, the seasons, the four seasons. So we know when the rains come most times and when everything happens. So you use that as your roadmap. You use, it, use that as your gauge. But look at verse 5. He said, as thou knowest not what is the way of the Spirit. No man knows the way of the Spirit. But we follow God by his activities and actions. Now how the bones are grown in the womb of head that is with a child. So even nobody, even the doctors does not know how the, the bones grow. The first time you see a, a woman is pregnant, 
everybody's happy. But before you know that child that is just like nothing, maybe a block of blood, begin to have bones. So the Bible said nobody knows how the bones are formed and grown in the womb of a child. Even so, thou knoweth not the work of God, who make it all. But how do we follow God? By the move of God. By the move of God. I'm going to tell us, we're going to read the place here, and we're going to focus there and pray. So today is not a day that we just go into a lot of um, readings. But I want you to see the book of Luke. Luke chapter 1. The birth of John the Baptist. From verse 67, we are going to read intensively 10 verses. It's, it's lengthy, but we are going to read it so that it will now give us where we are going today, the road map. Um, Luke chapter 1, verse 67, we are reading to 68, to 78. And his father, Zachariah, was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he had visited and redeemed his people and had raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophet, which have been since the, the world began, verse, verse 71 now, that we should be saved from our enemies, we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us talking about the Jews there, to perform the mercy, hallelujah, promise of our fathers, and to remember his holy covenant. God is a covenant-keeping God. There were covenants that were ahead of time, before this time that Zechariah was praying. There were covenants that were, have been enacted. It has been in place. So it's not like the covenant came on board by this time, but he was trying to remind them. But look at verse 73. He said, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham. There was an oath. Abrahamic covenant was already in place. But something, God is about to move into another dimension. It is still part of that covenant. But look at verse 74. That he will grant us that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Verse 76. And thou, child, shall be born, shall be called the prophet of the highest. For thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. He was talking about the birth now of John the Baptist. So he's talking about the child shall be called the prophet of the highest. For thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. So the, the, the mission of the child has already been defined before the child came forth. This is a move now, a move of God. But this man pictured it, he picked it up in the spirit and began to tell them that something is about to happen. Somebody is coming that is going to prepare the way. He is not the way, but he's the preparer of the way. Look at verse 77. To give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. How do we do it? The last verse here is through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from our heart had visited us. The day spring now is what we call moving stars. Moving stars. That's, these are the stars that the, the, the witches and the wizards, the children of Babylon saw when Jesus was born. They saw the star. It's not a star that is shooting. It's not a star that is static. It's not a, a north star that tells you about the, the four cardinal points. There's a star for the north. There's a star for the south. There's a star for the east and west. But this star is a moving star. It's only people that understand what we call um, astrology or child beings, or people that have the wisdom to get into the supernatural can understand that there's a star. When you see that star, that means a season is about to be born or a season is already at the horizon. You have to follow that star to understand the next season. So the, the Bible said, through the tender mercy, all these things will happen not by anything, but by the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high has visited. There shall be a day spring that will come out and begin to visit, understanding the time that we are in 
I don't want us to be lost in the politics of the COVID and lost in the numbers of deaths and the numbers of people that are in, in, infected with this sickness or the plague. Is it deadly? Yeah, it is deadly. But I want you to look beyond that. I want us to go behind in the background to start to see what is God doing now? What is the move of God now? There is something that God is about to do, but it can only happen by the tender mercy. Our God is a merciful God. When people begin to pray, even I'm telling you before now, prayers have been going on in different places that we don't even know who they are, but we are also praying. There are remnants that is still left in the whole world praying for God to do something. And the answer to that prayer is what we are seeing. Sometimes when God answers prayer, it does not come in the form and in the shape and in the way that we expected it. Sometimes it comes with trouble. But after the trouble, there shall be something great. Sometimes it comes with death. Sometimes it comes with hardship. Sometimes it comes with terrible, terrible things. But in the mix of that, you will see that God has answered your prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. So don't be confused by the slogans of the politicians telling you who to vote for or who not to vote for. Don't be confused by the data that is flying everywhere. They are putting numbers of people dying and people that did not die. Don't be confused by the noise of all that we are all going to drown. No, there is something that is going to come out. The church, the, the sons of God that is coming out on the other side of this economy, on the other side of this COVID is going to be stronger. These are people you have never heard about, people you didn't know. Some of us, you know, some of us, you don't know. There are men, voiceless men that are coming out, their voice shall be very loud. They have not been compromised. They have not bowed down to bar. They have not eaten from the Jezebel table. They are people that have kept the covenant and kept the altar. That is what God showed. The children of God were praying for an answered prayer. And God showed the prophet, say, go and tell them that the time has come and it will happen because of a, a star, a day spring star that is coming out that will visit the earth. And somebody will be born, but he is not the way. He is a preparer of the way. He will go ahead of the way. He will prepare the way for someone that is coming. That in this time, the covenant that was ignited by Abraham was for the sons of Abraham. And Moses affirmed it with the law that was meant for the Jews. But Jesus is coming now to bring another group of people into that covenant that were not in the original formation of the covenant, which is called Gentiles. And that's where I'm going now. When God made that covenant, he made it with Abraham and his seeds. Biologically, whether Jews or Arabs, they were part of the Abrahamic covenant. So he went to to. to, to to the time of Moses, God now reaffirmed it and enacted it with the law. And they have to follow all this law to be able to keep that covenant. But the time came that the law will now metamorphose to be two things. Love God with all thy heart and love thy neighbor as thyself. And God said, this covenant, I'm going to open another window and invite other people into this covenant that was already made. So but it has to happen by mercy. Because if I have to make a condition onto it, many people will not qualify. Many of us that are Christians today, there is no way from the background we are coming from, the idol worshiping, from the covenant of the altars of our ancestors, we can never become Christians. But by the mercies of God, that's why we are called sons of God today. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. So look at Psalm 85 verse 6. He said, will thou not retrieve us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? Look at verse 7. Say, show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. It is by the mercy of God. Psalm 102 verse 13. Many of us know this. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. For the time to favor her, yea, the set time is coming. Zion is the church. By the mercy of God, there is a moving power of God now. And until you understand and move with God, you cannot get to the next dimension. And wherever you stop, that is how far you will get from, the, from that move. There's a move of God now 
And those that understand God in the spirit can be able to align themselves and begin to move with God in the name of Jesus Christ. I want, you to, I want us to talk about the revelation that God gave to Peter about the next group that is going to be added to, to the covenant. Then we will pray. In the book of Acts chapter 10, I want you to understand that after Jesus had died and resurrected, the Holy Spirit have come down. The disciples and the apostles were already on fire, burning down cities and nations by the word of God, taking over territories, recovering. But they were still around Jerusalem. God wanted to move them now into the Gentiles. Remember when Jesus spoke to them in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, he said, and you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witness both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. So there was a plan about we, the uttermost part. There was a plan about Africa, Asia. There was a plan about America in the new covenant. So Jesus said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come. But you will start in Jerusalem. You will move down to Judea and to Samaria and to the uttermost part. So they have begun to conquer Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. They began to speak in diverse of tongues. Things are happening. Lives are being changed. People are being transformed. It is about that moving style. Understanding the move of God. Understanding the time. Redeeming the time. Now in Acts chapter 10, verse 9. The Bible says, on the morrow, we are reading down to 16. As they went on their journey and drew near unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about six hours. And he became very hungry and could have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance. It's not that Peter wanted to fast. It was not a voluntary fast, but probably it was in the agenda of God because the Bible said that he could have eaten. Maybe there was no food at the time they came back to that place and Peter just decided, okay, let's, let me go and pray at the top of the house. And he was still hungry. His, maybe his mind was on that food. But God didn't want him to eat so that he would not be, his spirit would be alive. While he was about to pray, the Bible said in verse 11, and saw heaven open. There was a revelation and a, a certain vessel descended upon him as it has begun a great skit, neat with four corners and let down to the earth. Verse 12. Wherein all were manner, all, all manner of four footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. Verse 13. So he saw this, this creature that is not natural, but he saw different fowls of the air, creeping beasts, all kinds of things, four footed beasts, walk, walking. And verse 13, and there came a voice to him. Rise, Peter. Kill and eat. God has opened up a window to the uttermost part of the earth, which I think Peter lost by my own understanding. But Peter said, no, not so, Lord. For I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. God is telling you, he knew he was not like, it's not like the devil was talking to him. He knew it was God. When God has told you to do something, why will you, you don't have the, the you don't have the ability to refuse. He said, no, Lord. Do you know the meaning of Lord? We talked about it yesterday, the Lordship of Jesus Christ. If Jesus is your Lord, then he owes you. The Lord is the one that owns you. He is powerful over you. He has authority over you. He has rulership over you. And Peter said, no, not so, Lord. I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spoke unto him again the second time. What God had called clean, thou call not thou uncommon. What God has called clean, don't say it's common. Don't say it's unclean. 
He said, this is done three times. And the vessel was received up again into the heaven. Peter refused. Three times God called. Those are the three dimensions of God. Peter said, I can't do that. And that's where his ministry was transferred to God. If you read the next, you see how God called Paul. Marco to Sakataba. But I'm not focusing on Paul today. What I'm focusing on was understanding. Peter did not understand the kind of politics and meetings and deliberations that was going on in heaven. And at that time, there were many apostles. There were many preachers. There were many of them doing great things. But the dust rested on him, Peter. God was not lacking tools this time. Everybody was prophesying. The spirit of God was rampant. Everywhere they go, there were signs and wonders. People were doing so much that God decided to use Peter to open the door of the Gentiles. Remember that when Peter came out of this trance, a man called Cornelius came from Rome to see Peter. And Peter prayed with him and let him go. And Cornelius was already on fire, but he needed people the, the ranks of Peter, the apostles, they have heard what is happening in Jerusalem. They have believed Christ with me without seeing anything. And this man came all the way from Rome. And Peter could not see Cornelius as the bridge to the Gentiles. He lost his ministry to Paul. Understanding the time. Sometimes we can be in a move. Peter was enjoying the glamour of Jerusalem. The glory of, yeah, God has come to Jerusalem. But the original commission was, and you shall receive power, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost part. They have forgotten the other part of the, 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 the word that Jesus gave them on the day of ascension. And it happens to us as Christians. Maybe you have prayed, family, two generations have been praying, praying in your family. And God decided to visit that family. And now things are beginning to happen. We settle on that level. You see families that used to cry out to God three times a week. They used to cry. God begin to visit them. Girls are getting married. The boys are doing very well. The things are happening in the family. They will relax. And that move will stop. Because where you stop is where the journey stops. If you continue with God, the journey continues. If there's another move, God will still show you because you are in that trail. That's why the Bible says the sons of Issachar. I, I believe that today, many of you, your eyes of understanding shall be opened. That God will give you the ability to know the move. That when you see it, let me tell you, if you are going to journey in the, in the wilderness, and many people have journeyed. I have been in the wilderness of life. And also, I have been in the desert for la for rain. If you have gone to the Middle East, you will see desert. There is no tree. There is no landmark. There is nothing. You go with the star. You walk with the either the northern star or the southern star. Don't know what side you are of the desert. There is no reference point. Everywhere is sand. You can only journey in the night where you can see the star and follow the star. That is where we are now. There is no reference point. You are focusing on the moving star of God. Looking unto Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith. That's where our eyes should be focused on, vested on. Our eyes have to be permanently on the word. Because the word became flesh. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Many of us, we started with God very well. We started vigorously. The zeal that we used to start was so fierce. And 10 years down the line, we have settled in a place. We have camped ourselves in some move. And that's where we are. Some people say, oh, I remember in the days of holiness. Yeah, the move of the holiness came. And when it was going down, God is not dying. There was another move that came. Faith. Faith was moving. Many of you that were in the 70s and the 80s, the, the holiness move came out in the 70s because it was a lot of drug addiction and all kinds of things happening in the whole world. Holiness was the order of the day. Then God moved to faith. And now we are in the dispensation of grace. And people think that some people that stayed in holiness, they are still holding on to holiness. 
Holiness is still the move of God, but God has moved, evolved into some other move. You have to be able to understand the move of God and the time we are in. And the time that we are entering now is going to be the end time. Many of us didn't know that Jesus is about to come until you grow up and begin to take your place. The Bible said in Isaiah chapter 2 verse 2, it shall come to pass in the last day, which is where we are, that the, the mountain of the lost house shall be established on the top of other mountains and other hills, and nations shall run into it. You have to begin to take your place wherever you have find yourself. If you're a policeman, get to the high ranks of police. Be on the table of decision. If you're in the military, you have to rise to the top. If you're in the medical field, rise to the top. You have to be the sons of God are called to occupy positions of authority. We have to be the light in everywhere we find ourselves. That's what I'm saying. You don't have to settle in any place that God has given. Maybe thank God for the, 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 the first degree. Thank God for the position you have in your job. It's not enough. You must desire. You must desire. Because there is a grace. There's a grace that is released in this COVID that the sons of God will become politicians. We are going to be over the political mountain. Many of us will be over the educational mountain. You, you have to understand the time. It is not a time to wish because if we don't get to this move, Jesus is not coming. That will prepare the coming of Christ. What John did in his time was to open the way, the door for Jesus to come. When John went into the, 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 the fasting, after his ministry has begun, he came out and they looked at him and said, who are you? He said, I am a voice that cried in the wilderness. But before John said that, we have read in Luke chapter one that his mission was defined before he was, he was even conceived, that he will be the one to prepare the way. What are you seeing where you are? Are you seeing all kinds of negativity or you see positivity because of what is happening in your life? It, does, it's not, it has nothing to do with you as a person. It has all to do with the move of God at this time. So if you have to journey in the wilderness, you move in the night. And we have to be night crawlers. God was a night man before he became a God of the day. One day I'm going to talk about the night move of God. Every great move of God starts in the night. At the midnight. Even the beginning of beginnings, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the deep. That was night. And in the mix of darkness, God called out day. God called light out. Genesis chapter 3. Chapter 1 verse 3. And God said, let there be light. And light came out of darkness. And God separated the darkness from the light and called the darkness night. And light he calls day. And there was evening and there was morning. When the children of Israel left Egypt, it was, the Bible said, at about midnight. At about midnight. The angel of death went and killed every firstborn in Egypt. There was crying in the whole land of Egypt, including the son of Pharaoh was there. And Pharaoh sent for Moses. But before then, God had told the Jews to put the blood of the lamb on their doors and say they should not sit down. They should be eating that meat standing. Get their backs packed because he's about to do something. And thank God for people like Moses that had a great communication with God. And God was able to tell him the event of things that is about to happen. In the midst of plague that is coming upon the Egyptians, they live from one plague to the next plague. From one, 10 plagues has happened. Number 10 just happened. Everybody is crying. Death, your next door neighbor. Everywhere you go, people are crying nationally. God is about to exit his children. And they are going to live that night. And there was a call from the palace to Moses. And Moses showed up and the king said, go. If they were not prepared, they would not leave that night. But God has told Moses to tell them to pack their back, carry everything they need to travel. And they are celebrating, but they are, they are ready. They were all dressed up in their attire to travel while they are eating the meat of the burnt offering. And that night they left. By the time day was breaking, the Egyptians discovered that the, their servants were all gone. Same thing when Jesus was born, his star came out in the night. 
and the men from Babylon, the charges, these are witches and wizards, they saw his star. The star was not a shooting star, it was a moving star. And the star, they began to follow that star. They knew that this star is a different star. They began to read the history of the star. These are people that can go into the supernatural and begin to unravel mysteries. But I want you to see how the devil does his own thing. The devil almost tricked them when they went into the house of um, Herod. But God was a wise God. After they couldn't get their answer from the palace, they came out and the star was still standing there. Your ability to recognize it and follow it. By this time, I'm telling you, pastors were praying. Preachers were praying. Prophets were there. They couldn't see. They couldn't understand the move of God. They were waiting for a Messiah. The Messiah has been born already. They are still saying, God, send us a Messiah. That same God is moving today. Are you able to understand the movement of God this time? Are you discerning to understand what God is doing at this season? Are you ready to move with God, to go with his biddings? It has nothing to do with you. It has all to do with where your destiny is tied to. We are going to pray. Look at the Bible said in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. The Bible said here, who, had, who also had made us able ministers of the New Testament, some transitions say of the new covenant, not of the letters, but of the spirit. For the letter killeth, the spirit giveth life. Are you ready to journey in the spirit with God? Because God has made you able. When the Bible says you are able, that means you have all the ability. For the Bible to call you able ministers of God is he has given you all the qualities all the trainings, all the things that you need, the tools that you need to go on this journey. And it's a, spirit of, it's a spiritual journey. It's not a physical journey. Our ability to pray and understand the time is very vital. The disciples, before the Spirit of God came down, Jesus told them in Acts chapter 1, and said, tarry in Jerusalem until the Holy Ghost is come upon you. The Bible said they began to pray in the upper room. Many were there. But by the time the Spirit came in Acts chapter 2, there were only 120 people that were left. So many left after 10 days, 20 days, nothing has happened. Because he never gave them time. He said, tarry you. They say, what? Are you going to now take over the, the, the rulership of Israel? And Jesus said, no, this is not for you to know the time. It's only my Father who is in heaven. But you shall receive power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, that you shall become witness, both in this Jerusalem that I was killed, and in Judea, and in Samaria. But he told them something about the war. By this time, nobody does international ministry. You stay in your locality, and that's where you go to preach and die. But he said, and to the uttermost part of the earth. And that is what we saw when the time came, after they have conquered the whole Jewish territory, the vision was given to Peter to go to the Gentiles. And Peter refused. Understanding the time. Are you going to do like Peter? And Peter did not know that God was not lacking too. God has a replacement of him waiting. That man has not become God again. Because the Bible said the gift of God is not unto repentance. Paul was already killing Christians, burning down churches. But on his way to Damascus, God arrested him. That was it. Because God knew that Paul would do his biddings. And by the time Peter came back to join Paul and them in the foreign land, it was late. The grace was not there for him anymore. He went to Rome, he was killed there. Understanding the time. And I don't want us to be complacent or settled. Maybe you have been praying so much for a particular thing and God began to do it. Don't settle in that thing. Maybe your mind was carrying husband, husband. I need a husband. You have been praying, you are fasting. God is seen beyond a man. God has seen your children, your grandchildren. He has seen their future. 
where they will be, what you will be. So don't settle because you are married and you give up. And prayer will just end. Makoto Sakataba. We are going to pray. Ask God to give you the opportunity to understand. To be able to discern the times that we are in. Because many things are happening now. If you don't understand, you will think that the news does not know what is going on. In the time Jesus was born, Newscasters were giving news. They didn't know that Messiah has come. The pastors were preaching and still doing sacrifice, killing goats and cattle and sheep for atonement, while the one that will save us is already there. They did not see it. But it was unbelievers, men that has the ability to guess the star. The Bible said they saw the star. The star was not a shooting star. It was a moving star. And they began to read the, the history of that star. And they followed the star. Another moving star is out on earth now. This is a worldwide pandemic. And it's about to become an endemic. But we don't care how many names they call it. Started with, with, with uh, being an epidemic, it went to being a pandemic. They say it's going to become an endemic. It's going to be there with us. We are going to be taking shots every year. But this is not what we are focused on the COVID. And in America now, everything is about election and who's going to win and who's going to lose. And all that, everybody's getting up to know how to spin it to favor them. But behind the scene, God is bringing something. There is a moving star that is out. Our ability to know it as sons of God and stay focused and pray. The Bible says, if my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways and seek my face, God said, I will hear from heaven. I will come down. I will heal their land. I want us to pray for the world. We are going to start with America where we are. You can call the nations where you are, the nations of Europe, Africa, Asia, Australia. I, will, I want us to pray. This calls for prayer. It's not a time to begin to wish that things change. We are the ones that will change. When God called Moses, people were praying. He said, I have heard the cry of my people. They were not just crying. Oh. No, they were praying. The cry was they were praying. Say, God, when shall we get out of this condition? I have heard the cry of my people. I am come down to deliver them. Now, go to Pharaoh. Say, let my people go that they might serve me. That was the word God gave to Moses. Lord, we commit the nation of America. Cities are burning in America. We are looking at the news every day. We see young men and women on the streets every day. There's violence. It's, if it's not police, if it's, it's something, it's the court injunction. It is not all kinds of things are going on. The politicians are lying from east to west. They are not telling us the truth. Everything you are hearing on the news is not the truth. We have to go back and hold on to the word of God because there is a moving star that is out already. Your ability to see it and travel with it in the night because you can only travel with that star in the night. When you travel in the desert, there's no reference point. There's nothing. You have to only move in the night or else you might be in the same place not knowing. You walk with the star in the night. And that's the only way you move. So you cover as many mileage as you can in the night. When the day comes, you camp wherever you stay. And when the night comes back, you continue your journey. That's where we are now. We have to become night crawlers. Men of the spirit. We have to begin to move with God to be able to articulate and see and be able to be part of the movement and the things that God is doing at this time. I want you to pray. I want you to call upon God. You can localize it, bring it to your own family. If you don't want to pray for the countries and nations, take it to God in your family, in your tribe. Something must break out. I have heard the cry of my people. Are you ready to cry to God today? Say, God, touch me, touch my family. Visit us. You have been promising us something. Today, we are focused on you. We are holding on to thy will and to thy word. Lord, do that which you have said you will do, that your name shall be glorified. O Karama Shakataba, I am available, Lord. Use me. Use me. Make yourself available. God said, who shall I say? Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8. 
And I heard a voice crying, who shall I send and who shall go for us? Are you ready to say, here I am, send me? Or are you waiting for God to call somebody else to come and deliver your family? If God has put you there, you are the one that God is going to use to bring salvation to your family. You are the one that God will use to bring deliverance to your children, your grandchildren, to your father, your mother. Everything that has happened in your family, somebody has to stand up. The Bible said that Deborah said, in the time when men could not speak, I, Deborah, I stood and became a voice in Israel. You can say I'm a female. You can be the voice. What about Esther? She said, if I perish, I perish. There was a move. The devil has cast a devilish net and the gallow had been set to wipe out the Jews. And the thing was brewing. And they came and told Esther, say you are in this position, not because of your beauty, but it was for such a time as this. Not because of your eloquence or all your moralities, but it was for such a time like this. And she said, the king did not call me, but I will go into fasting and I want you to pray with me. And when they prayed, she said, I'm gonna go into the king palace, even, even though I was not invited. If I perish, I perish. But when you understand the time of God, God is waiting for somebody to take one step so he can take the next five steps for you. God will amplify your footsteps. The four lepers were, that was at the gate of the entrance of Samaria. The Bible said we, uh, the, it was famine in the land. People were eating their own children to survive. But the moving star was already out. And the prophecy has gone forth a day before that day. And the prophet Elijah said, by tomorrow, a cord of flour shall be sold for nothing at the gate of Samaria. And a foolish servant of the king said, oh, if God will even open the windows of heaven and pour out, will that be? And he looked at him and said, you shall see it, but you shall not benefit of it. And what happened? The next day, the four lepers, they have been so hungry. Nobody is coming to visit them again. Nobody has food. They said, why should we stay here and die? We shall, if we go to our brothers, we shall die there. They don't have food. If we go, Makata, if we stay here, we die. If we go to the camp of the Samaritans, they will kill us because the Syrians are our enemies. But if they leave us, we will leave because they have food. So they said, let's go into the camp of the Assyrians. And in the twilight, they began to move. The moment they took that one step, the Bible said the Assyrians began to hear the noise of chariots. And God set an embargo upon them. And they ran for their life. And these four men discovered food that will feed a nation. God is setting you up. Don't say, think you are crippled. Don't think you don't have money. God is not looking for you to have money, but for you to stand up. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1 says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. There shall be darkness. Yes, gross darkness, the people. But the Lord shall arise upon you. Are you ready to rise and become that force in your family? Understanding the time is knowing when to pray. Knowing when to stand. Knowing when to decree. I speak unto you today by the unction and the power in the name of Jesus. Whatsoever is holding you bound. Be free and loose from it in Jesus' mighty name. Many of you are desiring higher level of dimensions of power. Let God take you into that place, to the new height of God. Begin to enter into his rest today by the unction and the power in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord, for we know that you have done it. We give you all glory and adoration. Blessed be the holy name, O Lord. O Kanamashakataba. Rekata Sokotobu. What a mighty God we serve today. Understanding the time. As a son of God, you have to know that God works in times and seasons. God works in rhythms. He moves with sounds. When the, when, the, when the dance has changed in the spirit, it's only the men of the spirit that will understand the next dimension, the next pattern of the dance. The dance we are dancing on earth has changed. There's a new move that has come up. You have to understand and be able to move with that move. You follow the star and you start to get to the mind of God. I want to thank you for being here today. God bless you. I want you to continue to pray this prayer. Say, God, show me myself. Open me up. 
open me up my family. Pray for your children, your wife, your husband, your, your, your father, your mother, everybody. Let all hands be on deck. God, visit my family, visit my clan, my tribe, visit us. There's something that is unique about you. But your discovery of it will make you to understand what to do. It is your understanding that will make you to be outstanding in life. Makoto Sakataba. Rabagashi Kotomo. Rikatasi Kotomo. You are not going to die. You shall not die. The Bible said in the book of Psalm 118. Hallelujah, verse 17. Say, I will not die, but live to declare the counsel of the Lord in the land of the living. You are called for life. Jesus said, I have come to give you life and the life I give you shall be an abundant life. I have come that you might have life and have it in abundantly. That means when you have it abundantly, you give out life. You are a carrier of life. I don't care what sickness has possessed your body. I speak life into you tonight. Right now, in the name of Jesus, receive healing. Every part of you that is not responding by the unction and by the voice of God, in the name of Jesus Christ, let healing come upon you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Whatever it is called, fibro cyst, I break it today. It shall fall off. Ah, in the name of every pain from your ankles, your pain on your knees, every pain in your waist, pain at your shoulder, every pain at your back, let it begin to die naturally and leave you. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Therefore, has no power to put pain upon that body. By the authority and the power in the name of Jesus, I begin to pray for you. Many of you have lost jobs. You don't have business now. Things are going bad. But I want you to look behind this because there's going to be a, 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 a climb and it's going to be still very fast. God is visiting you financially. You just have to keep your ears and eyes on the ground, understanding where there is money and where there's a need. God will introduce you to something new. Many of you, I see you dangling into something that is new. You don't understand it. You don't have to know it. But your ability to know that this is the next frontier, where people are going, where people are. And if you don't have a digital platform or way of receiving payment in your business, go and set up one because God is blessing now. The resources that you need is already available before you start. In the name of Jesus Christ, in jobs, there are jobs that have never existed before. They don't have a name before, but they are coming out now. You are positioning yourself. Some of you need to go back and retweet your, 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 your resume and, and begin to make it to look in conformity to what the economy of today is. Your abilities, I want you to be specific on what you can do now, especially on the IT form, in the digital platform, you will see God moving your life. You are not going to drown. Oh, Makana Sikadama, Liko Something new has happened. There's a moving star. Your ability to move with that star is very vital. And don't settle. Because where you stop is where the star stops with you. In Jesus. We remember when they went into the house of the, 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 the house of the king, Herod, the star stopped. So if they have settled in that house, that would be their journey would be defeated. But your ability to move is very important with God. So when you start to see success, say many of you now, in the next one more, two more, some strange resources will begin to enter your hand. Don't settle. Continue to pray. Continue to pray. Continue to pray. Continue to pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because it is in the altar that you cook all what you eat in the day. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for we know that you have done it. If you are here today for the first time, you are not saved. Oh, Kanamasha Kataba, the Bible said, with our mouth we confess, and with our heart we believe that Jesus died and resurrected for our sins. I want you to say, Lord Jesus Christ, I believe in my heart, and I confess with my mouth that you died and resurrected for my sins. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. And I'm going to see you Monday. Bye.